Hi everyone, I'm among my cabarets today to talk to you a little bit about universal monitor chassis. Um, I have them in my turbo and my gyrus and today I'm going to take it out of my turbo because it's not working out very well. But I'm also going to talk about why it's working well in the gyrus, so stick around. The turbo cabaret came to me from a local arcade cafe that I was doing repairs for. I filmed these shots after the chassis swap, so what you're seeing is the final result with the K7000 chassis. When I got the turbo, the original monitor was shot, the neck board cracked in half, no power, shifter worn down so bad it didn't stay in the up position. The monitor turned out to be an oddball toey with a weird tube connector and was burned in badly, so it was time to toss it. I bought a $5 13-inch Sanyo or Toshiba TV from Kijiji, which is a Canadian eBay-owned classified site, freed the tube and mounted it using the original frame. The tube had a thin neck, also known as a CR31, so I ordered a so-called 7-pin universal chassis. Months later, it arrived. This is an HL21, commonly known online as a 14-21-inch universal chassis. It's apparently a clone of a Weiya design that was sold in the 2000s. The PCB design has been whittled down to save costs over the years. These days you are unlikely to find the degaussing thermistor or pin header, and in some cases you'll even be missing the high and low vertical resistance switch, robbing you of much of its universality. Today you'll find them on eBay or AliExpress easily enough, primarily in two varieties, one with a 7-pin neck board, compatible with CR31 tubes, or 9-pin, which is compatible with CR23 tubes. These are the two types of tubes that you'll primarily find in North America anyway. As a rule of thumb, older boxier TVs will have a CR23, newer, curvier CRTs will have a CR31. I have not tried these with any type of flat screen CRT. Search for universal chassis on sites like the KLOV forums and you'll find unending reports of terrible results, releases of smoke, and the like. I'm here to talk about why they're right, but also why it's not the whole story. There is another, mostly unrelated, universal board for larger monitors, advertised for tube sizes of 25 to 29 inches. I have yet to use one of these, although I do have one that was sent to me by mistake. 13-inch monitors are not as common in the arcade world, so there are fewer choices for chassis available. I had seen a few examples of 13-inch K7000 chassis, and a few reports that 19-inch K7000 chassis would work fine on a 13-inch tube, but I wasn't quite sure about this. So instead, I decided to go for a universal chassis, having some experience with them in the past. After installing the universal chassis, right away I had trouble balancing between the dark and bright screens. If adjusted to get the bright screen bright, any black backgrounds would be a dull gray. If adjusted to darken those black backgrounds, the bright screens were dreary. And maybe this race is just overcast. But the most annoying problem shows up when moving between bright and dark areas. Watch here as we exit the tunnel onto the ice road. It's bright for a fraction of a second before darkening. My camera was in manual mode here, and you can see the background exposure does not change. So I decided to replace Turbo's HL21 universal chassis with a Wells Gardner K7000. This is a Wells Gardner K7000. Well, this is the 25-inch variety that I have in Immortal Kombat that I'm working on. I bought the 19-inch version on eBay as working for a reasonable price. The K7000 is known to be very reliable, and new flybacks are still available, which is good because it is the most common part to fail. The real bonus with the K7000 is that it supports a wide band of yokes, so much so that you can pretty much pick up any consumer tube with the right size neck and expect it to work within reason. Unfortunately, I don't have the pan that goes under the chassis, and the original frame supported the original chassis in a very strange way, so I'm just going to add PCB feet and install the chassis to the inside of one of the wood sides of the cabinet, which is where I had the universal chassis. First, I tried mounting it with the adjustments toward the front, so I could reach in through the coin door to make changes, but the neck wiring was too short. I flipped the chassis around, and now it reaches.
but what's this black wire coming from the flyback? It's the focus wire, which should be terminated underneath this white block. It must have just worn down and broken off. I'll take the chassis to the bench to fix this, and I might as well do the rest of the wiring there anyway. Opening the cover on the CRT connector can be difficult to figure out, but it's always some variant of trying to bend some plastic out of the way without breaking it. I removed the broken piece of wire, stripped about half an inch of the focus wire, and soldered it in and close the cover. This wire carries a high DC voltage, which is why it's protected by the plastic cover. So I need to make an adapter. Um, the source will be the six pin plug, which is already in the machine. And it's going to go to this 10 pin Molex um, Trifurcon style connector uh, that goes here. Move these out of the way. So uh, what we have is RG being ground in the front, and the very last pin is horizontal negative sync, which is what the manual recommends you use if you're using negative composite sync. So I'll be using that one. So this is the old adapter I had for the universal chassis. Um, so that's the connector that comes with it, and I had uh, terminated it using uh, the six pin here. So I'm just going to copy the exact same order, red, blue, green, and then sink and ground like so. Okay, so I'm going to crimp each of these wires. Um, this is using the female socket. Uh, and these crimpers just come from Amazon or AliExpress. Mine probably came from Princess Auto, which I think is something similar to Harbor Freight in the US. I will take one of my wires there you go good crimp and this is going this is the white wire so it's going to go in taking care to line up correctly it's going to go back there excellent And there we go, there's our video adapter. The uh, monitor's power plug has one round and one D shape, so I have that here, so I'll do an adapter. And I need female for this side. You end up with a lot of um, TE connectivity, which is the A series, uh, and that's some of them. And then the other ones are all Molex, which are the WM series. So it can be a little difficult to keep them all straight because you end up with male and female pins that look very similar but don't fit each connector. Hmm. Okay, well, in the interim there, I used the wrong socket for one of the two wires. Had a really hard time finding one that matched, but I did just find one, so we can continue now. Okay. So there is that side. This is AC, so it doesn't really matter colors inside the... AC is actually 100 volts and it's um, pink and blue so by using white and blue it doesn't really change that much I don't have pink wire so it's not going to look perfect anywhere and there is our power converter and extension I think we're just about ready to go back 
The last thing I have to do is this ground wire needs to connect to the ground wire that comes from the monitor, um, from the shroud around it basically. So I need to probably just put a spade connector on this and on the other one. The other one already had um, one of those large posts that actually looks very similar to say the degauss post that you'd see over here. Um, but I don't have these things separate in any way and they're not for inline anyway so uh, if I were to use that you'd want to mount it to the PCB and there's, there's no space for that so I'm just going to attach a spade connector. Good. So this is the other side of that ground I was talking about and I'm going to cut this off and put on a mating spade connector. Okay, now I'm finally ready to mount the K7000. What you're about to witness is my first true power on. I am extremely wary of monitor chassis and any time I change anything related to the monitor, I turn the game on from several feet away and get hyper-focused on anything to indicate failure, such as anything glowing, anything smoking, or anything that smells weird. But guess what? First try, we have success. Well, it's upside down, but that's not a problem. I hadn't even bench tested this K7000, so thanks eBay seller. I can already tell the brightness is much improved. I flipped the horizontal yoke connector to correct the orientation, then adjusted the focus, brightness, and colors. I was easily able to achieve bright brights and dark darks. Finally, look how well the screen maintains brightness when exiting the tunnel to the ice road. I'm calling this a great success. So I mentioned before that I think these universal chassis have a place in the modern arcade. Here's my slightly wacky Italian centipede cabinet. The monitor was a Hantarax MTC 900, which is known to be a pain to work on, and the burn-in was terrible. So once again, a tube was harvested from a consumer TV, this time a 19-inch, and mounted in the cab along with another universal chassis. In this case, the results are excellent. The game is bright, focused, and the background is properly black. However, go into the service menu and everything falls apart. I'm not sure why the service mode includes these color backgrounds, but you can see that the chassis just can't deal. But who cares, the main game works fine. I'll likely leave this universal in the cabinet. Next up is my scratch-built mini gyrus. I built this a few months ago just for something to do to round out the wall of minis along with the turbo and the Tetris. The screen on this guy is incredible. It's another 13-inch tube out of a consumer TV set. The background is fully black, the colors are vibrant, and the focus is spot on. And all with a universal chassis. The difference seems to be simply that Gyrus, like Centipede, is mostly black all the time. Let's look at two more. Here's my Burger Time, which is in a stern Super Cobra cabinet. Yet again, a beautiful result. Bright, clear graphics and dark backgrounds. So this last one is a middle of the road result. This is my Black Tiger, seen here in a stern Berserk cabinet. Now this one is actually decent to play on, despite the full screen graphics. The intro has a solid red background that darkens like the turbo and centipede service mode, but the actual game seems to play evenly, even though the overall brightness isn't quite up to what I would like. Some geometry issues are present at the top. You can see a small hourglass effect in the upper one inch or so, and the image can't quite be widened fully with this tube. So why is this game displaying so well despite the full screen graphics? Well, my theory has shifted a bit, now I'm wondering if a single color turned on too long causes the sag and the brightness. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, here's some interesting notes uh, from what we learned today. So the first thing is I didn't need to do anything to use this 19-inch K7000 chassis on a 13-inch tube. Uh, others have reported that you may have to change the width cap to narrow it so that it would actually fit, but I had no such trouble fitting the image from the turbo. Um, secondly, the AC voltage in the turbo is actually 100 volts AC inside, which is a little non-standard. Uh, it is standard for Japan and the monitor that was originally in this machine. 
Um, I found a thread on KLOV indicating that the 25 inch K7000 chassis would work just fine on 100 volts AC. So I was pretty sure that my 19 inch acting as a 13 inch would work on 100 as well. And it did. Um, the universal chassis also worked fine on 100 volts AC. Uh, I don't believe the issues I had were, were related to the input voltage since I saw the same darkening problems happening on the centipede um, and on the black tiger to some degree which both deliver the full 120 volts AC. Why not upgrade these machines to LCD? So much easier and you know maintenance free, but I really think you lose a lot when you go from a CRT to an LCD. I think you know the, the glow and the ghosting and all that um, is something that an LCD can't replicate. And I think you take away a lot of the power of the nostalgia that you, you know, get from playing these old arcade games when you move to an LCD. So what about the reliability of these universal chassis? So I haven't had any of these actually fail once they were installed and working normally. Uh, I had one arrive broken, the vertical deflection IC was bad, um, so the image was there but it was a straight horizontal line. So I took an IC out of another one, um, put it in and it worked fine. And I had that one sitting around as a spare because I had actually tried to change the width cap on that one. Uh, I think maybe to make an image wider, maybe for example on the Black Tiger I mentioned it's a bit narrow so it was a different game but I was trying to make it a bit wider. Uh, and I changed the cap that I thought was the width cap. I'm still pretty sure I was right, but I changed the value maybe a little too much, uh, and it shorted out, um, well, it blew the fuse on it. So uh, after that, I couldn't, it kept blowing the fuse. So something else is shorted on the board. Uh, at the price, I didn't care to actually go through and diagnose it. So it just kind of sits around uh, as a parts board. So the other question is, why not tube swap from more available chassis like the K4600, K4900, and G07? So the truth is that I actually have done this a few times and I've just never gotten great results. So um, unlike the universal chassis in the K7000, you're not likely to find consumer uh, CRT sets that have yokes that are compatible with the 4600, 4900, G07. So that means you have to take the yoke off of the original tube and swap it onto the new tube. And by doing that, you get rid of the factory calibration because you've disturbed it. Um, but also I've simply found that I've never been able to get back to 100% convergence level. Um, you know, you may be able to get the static convergence great, but the dynamic is no good. So your edges, the colors start to um, diverge. Uh, even with magnetic strips, I've never, never had a great result. Sometimes you get pin cushioning where uh, the tube, uh, I think it's the deflection angle isn't quite right. So I've really decided going forward, I'm only going to um, tube swap in situations where I can keep that original yoke and the convergence rings in place with their original uh, configuration. The CRTs, consumer CRTs, 19 and 13 inch are still so available. Um, it doesn't hurt to buy a few, check the convergence on them and just kind of cherry pick the ones that you want. Okay, so that's all for today. Again, I'm Callum Brown for 74XX. Leave any comments below. Have you used these chassis before? Have you used the 25 inch version? Did you have success? Did you have failures? Let me know. And that's all for today and I'll see you next time.